Thanks for joining us today for another episode of Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here at the News Forum, where all voices matter. Well, it's past time to check back with our guest, Ian Kahn, on all things tech. Ian is an expert and a futurist at uh, Alcorny Global Strategies. He directed the Amazon Prime documentary, Blockchain City, and we want to welcome him back to Boom and Bust. Great to have you back here. Thanks for having me, Tony. It's a pleasure. So I guess the first thing, and we'll make it very general, what's the state of tech today? Well, it depends on how you see it and what do you see about tech. You know, on, uh, we've, in the recent weeks, we've heard a lot about um, uh, crypto going all the way down and, and there's a huge crisis that's uh, attacking the crypto industry. So that's one, one side of it. Uh, on the other hand, you know, a lot is coming back in the world of tech with technology events, conferences, People are coming back and meeting each other. And so there's the up to tech right there. Um, and on the, you know, on the, on the outskirts of all of this, there's new ideas, new technologies, the metaverse and so on, Web3 that are making the waves that are in the news. So a lot is happening depending on how we see things. But I think generally things are on the positive, things are on the up. Uh, and there's a lot more to see in the next few months and years. Well, let's talk a little bit about cryptocurrency because that has certainly captured uh, a lot, if not all, the headlines. Uh, what happened? So, you know, as every bubble burst, so did some part of cryptocurrency and some part of some unstable coins that were created. Is crypto generally a big bubble? I really don't believe so. I think it's an industry, it's a part of industry that's at a very initial stage. And by all means, we're not at a very high maturity rate or rate of crypto. And this is a big crisis that's hitting it. We're still in early days. And I think what is happening right now are the foundational steps that need to happen and take place for the industry to stabilize, for crypto to be uh, to have some kind of format, a regulatory format, and foundations that it can build upon in the future. Uh, governments are taking cryptocurrency seriously. Countries are taking crypto seriously. Uh, you know, private sector, of course. And so, it's early days in the in the full uh, expression of crypto, if you will. What happened some weeks ago was that a couple of cryptocurrencies that had some mechanism of specific way of working, a mechanism of working, collapsed and crashed. And there was huge market outroar and cry. And everybody who was who had who owned any of those cryptos sold them. And as a result, what happened is that the entire cryptocurrency industry, crypto prices have tanked as a result of that. Uh, question is, does this mean Bitcoin is a good or a bad investment? We're not here to debate that, but I think we're just, it's an early day, uh, early times in overall crypto development. So do you see a bounce back uh, for the industry generally? I think generally, if you look at the foundations of the industry, things are on the up. There are many new cryptocurrencies, asset classes, and different parts of crypto, different sides of crypto that are now being used, that are now being experimented upon, that are being adopted by the world in general. You have the emergence of non-fungible tokens, you have the emergence of smart contracts, and they're being used in different industries to create use cases and solve some important problems. And so all that has continued to happen. From a day-to-day -day trading cryptocurrencies perspective, yes, that has shown us a downside right now. I think generally, we need to focus on the foundational technology of crypto, which is blockchain technology, which offers much more than just crypto trading right. or, or, or asset trading. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Uh, the, the, the underlying technology blockchain has so many different applications other than cryptocurrency, right? Absolutely. So I directed a documentary called Blockchain City about three and a half years ago, and it covers the foundations of blockchain, who is doing what with blockchain and how does it make a difference. Uh, and blockchain is one of those foundational technologies that can completely redefine trust exchange of different assets, goods, e-commerce, uh, intellectual property, and you can do a lot of different things with how it, it manages information and how it enables a new framework for storage of information, storage of data, and sharing of data. That's a very interesting point. And I, I, again, I encourage people to, uh, to visit Amazon Prime to, uh, to see your, your documentary, Blockchain City. We're going to take a brief break. 
We'll be back with our guest, Ian Kahn. After that break, he'll, we'll continue our discussion, not only on crypto, but there's many, many other topics to discuss. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here with Ian Kahn. He is a technology expert and futurist. Uh, Ian, what, I, I know I said we were going to move away from crypto, but I have one more question for you because it has uh, become uh, a focus of political criticism uh, against uh, crypt cryptocurrencies. Uh, I find it a bit, uh, not amusing, but uh, uh, frustrating in a sense that, yes, cryptocurrency has, uh, has been on the, on the dip, but one could say the same thing about uh, my stock, uh, my stock purchases as well. But uh, give us a sense of your your take on all what criticism is justified, what criticism is unjustified, and uh, we'll take it from there. Of course. So criticism that is justified is the instability of cryptocurrency. And yes, absolutely, cryptos are very unstable. Uh, they're very hype driven. Whether it's uh, Elon Musk tweeting about Dogecoin or somebody else tweeting about some other cryptocurrency and you see the prices going up, it is definitely an unstable era in cryptocurrency development. Uh, on the positive side, uh, the, some of the things that are happening are that cryptocurrencies are changing the dynamics of many different industries. This is not an economic revolution, but more of a technology revolution that's also changing the economy, changing how different industries work, changing the relationship between people whose data is being shared and who's, who are taking people's data. So there's many elements to overall cryptocurrency development. You also see new things happening for, with, uh, with uh, new mediums of exchange. For example, tokenization is an idea where you can tokenize real estate, assets, uh, right. sharing economy, and so on. So I think those are all the positives that have a long way to go, but there's definitely very solid foundations to that. Uh, we're going to shift over to Web3 because you have uh, definitely commented on that in the recent past. So tell our audience why Web3 is an exciting innovation. Absolutely. So we are in the era of Web 2 right now. Web 1 was the early days of the internet when we had the first few websites where we could go and see things, read things, and order maybe something. Uh, the second iteration of the web happened when we were able to create content, uh, such as on social media. We were able to comment on people's uh, social status or we were able to write a blog post. And now there's two different parties involved, the provider and us going on their platform and writing content. But what happened in the second era of the internet, which is still right now, is content providers and these large big tech companies started monetizing the data that we created. Uh, for example, Facebook monetizes our likes and our dislikes and our shares. Uh, and many other platforms monetize other parts of what we create as consumers. And there's a challenge here. We're not making any money. They're making billions and trillions of dollars, which is great uh, in, for them. Uh, the third iteration of the internet now is where we as contributors, people, everyday people, internet users, can be part of that monetization puzzle. You also get more, you get control on your privacy, you get control on your data, and you can decide who can view your data, who can share your data, who cannot see your data, and so a lot more control on information uh, in general. And all this is powered by Web3. It's a very initial concept right now. It's very difficult to achieve the full blown proportionality of this, uh, but it's going to take maybe the next 10, 15 to 20 years for us to get there, but it's changing the foundations of the internet and the building blocks on which it's built. It's going to change how companies make money, how social media works, what privacy, uh, how privacy works at a, at a private and a government level, and all of those things are about to change. So uh, in a nutshell, Web3 is all about a greater privacy protections or choices on privacy protections and greater aspects of monetization. Have I got that right? You've got it right. It's, it's more privacy, more control for us, the users of the internet in general on our information and protecting ourselves from, from things that, we, that can harm us. Uh, and uh, is that being driven by uh, some of the abuses that happen on the web these days? 
I think generally with the last two decades of using social media in general, it has led to a general sense of awareness on the public side, uh, on the tech side. Technologies such as blockchain over the last 10 years have created a new thought process that, hey, such things are possible. And it wouldn't have been possible without decentralized technologies such as blockchain. And so the emergence of technology has a lot to do with it. And the awareness that we've had and the disappointments that we've had over the last two decades with social media and stuff has led to it. So I think there's there are a few different things that are happening altogether. We're having our discussion with Ian Kahn. He is a technology expert and futurist, uh, second time visitor to our program, always a lot of insights. We're gonna take a brief break. We'll be back right after that break. Please stay with us. Ian, uh, you've also written a little bit about uh, how uh, tech, uh, Web3, some of these other uh, trends are having an impact on the workforce. Maybe expand a little bit on that aspect of it. Of course, uh, the last couple of years, we've seen a huge amount of uh, workforce going virtual and whoever could go virtual has gone virtual. Uh, and all that uh, you know, really ramped up the overall development of technology, adoption of technology across the board uh, to, the, to the extent that we have now people after the pandemic is over and, and, all, and it's gone, it's behind us, uh, people don't want to go back. We also saw phenomena such as the Great Resignation happening in, uh, in America primarily where millions and millions of people do not want to go back to the same jobs that they had because now they know they have the freedom and flexibility to choose their employer, to work as they want, to work the hours that they want. So in general, there's a revolution of uh, happening within the workforce in the world, more focus on freelancing, more focus on uh, be becoming a, a digital nomad. And uh, what is happening is technology is paving the way for us to do this. Uh, the emergence of crypto, as we said, is happening right now. And uh, there's, there's uh, you know, many companies now offer to be paid in cryptocurrency. We saw Tesla um, you know, trying to uh, sell uh, their cars by accepting Bitcoin some time ago last year, I believe. Uh, and so there's a whole new change in the mindset of different organizations as to what the future of work is. We recently came out with a documentary called The Future of Work. It's available online on, on, uh, on YouTube. You can watch it. And it talks about really some of these impactful, dramatic things that have happened in the past and what the future looks like. Um, generally, the future is more automated. There's more focus on technology such as artificial intelligence that can create more automation without error. Machines can run 24 seven rather than wait for a human operator who can be error prone, who can fall asleep. Uh, and that's actually a great thing because now we can focus on some specialized things uh, as, as human operators uh, and upskill ourselves. Uh, there's also focus on robotics, where we can have automation, more production, uh, and, and offer services where the conditions are too hazardous for human operators to go in. Uh, so all these things are fueling a new world that's, that's technology-driven, but it's still going to take years before we are 100% automated and everything is run, on, run by robotics and AI. I don't think that era will ever come but it's generally the dawn of the era of automation uh, to benefit us as people. Yeah, uh, obviously a huge trend. Uh, the other big trend we haven't talked about yet, but should is the metaverse that seems to be building out. Uh, where do you see the metaverse going? Uh, the metaverse is, again, at a very, very initial stage. I, I'm lucky to be writing a book on the metaverse called The Metaverse for Dummies. It's coming out. Um, early next year. Uh, I've actually just designed a course for LinkedIn Learning called Securing the Metaverse. So the conversation has started already on what a secure metaverse can look like, what is inclusivity, what is protecting intellectual property and people from the metaverse. Um, the metaverse, again, is at a foundational level. Many companies are spending billions of dollars investing in it, creating the framework, creating these virtual worlds where we can go by putting our virtual reality glasses on and engage with others and create experiences and so on. Uh, a lot of that push 
is driven by the gaming industry, which is already kind of in a virtualized world. And now they're creating more experiences where you and I could join the same game from different locations in the world in high resolution. Graphics are amazing. The worlds we are in, in those virtuals, they look amazing. And so uh, acceleration in hardware technology and graphics technology has also paved way to the metaverse. Um, I really believe there's a place for the metaverse in the future where it can be a channel for engagement. Many uh, fashion brands are experimenting on it right now. Uh, they're selling their digital goods on it. You can have different experiences on it. Um, a huge rush to the metaverse right now, but I think it's going to only be applicable and suitable for certain industries to create certain experiences rather than it being for everybody to do everything. Uh, it's not that, unfortunately, but it definitely is something exciting and interesting. Uh, but it's not going to be one size fits all, right? It definitely is not. Right now, you have more than 50 different virtual worlds where you can do different things. In some places, you can buy your own virtual property and do something with it. And in many places, you just play a game and meet other people. So it's not one size fit for all. Different applications for different industries. Some of them may use it for entertainment. Some of them may use it for training. And some of them may just use it to waste our time. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement here at the News Forum with uh, Ian Kahn. He is a technology expert and futurist He's coming, coming to us from Toronto. Ian, uh, I think this had to do with uh, just some of your writing on the metaverse, or it could be broader than that, but you've mentioned that the U.S. military is also involved. Can you, can you elaborate on that? So many governments are uh, expanding on the usage of the metaverse. They're experimenting on how it can be used. Uh, the U.S. military is set to be looking into the metaverse and seeing how they could visualize uh, potentially uh, the metaverse for training purposes. And it's easy to do it there on the metaverse because now you can create a simulated world such as a war zone, a rescue and rescue mission zone, and train operators to go there before they're actually there. So all those applications to train military and train staff are very uh, suitable to be uh, accommodated with the metaverse. Uh, you have other countries such as the United Arab Emirates, which is taking a forefront or um, a position on the metaverse. Their government is experimenting with it. They have a foundation called the Dubai Future Foundation that's looking into it big times. Governments there, police departments there have already started uh, experimenting with the metaverse as well. Uh, and again, Everybody is looking into the possible uses. There isn't a mass adoption yet, but there's likely to be as uh, we find that there's a great use case. Yes, there are many people, let's say, from our community that are on the metaverse and they need to be served with a particular service. Uh, all those use cases are happening right now. Interesting. Well, uh, Ian, you are the futurist, not me. So... I'm going to give you the last three minutes uh, here. What's, what's next? What's coming uh, around the horizon there? I think in general, we need to be very adept and, and uh, accommodating to emerging technology. We don't need to run away from it. We have to investigate things that scare us, find a book, find a dummy's book. They're really simple to understand and read about all the complexity that you think is intimidating you. I think that's the first step for us to you know, uh, uh, be part of this world where technology is making a great impact. Uh, you know, read about cryptocurrencies, NFTs, the digital economy, the future of work, artificial intelligence, blockchain technology, all of these are going to create tremendous, tremendous impact on our lives in the next few years and going forward and the next generations. Uh, so it's time that we learn about them so that we can use them and, and better find our way around these technologies. Um, I really believe the future is what we create. And, and I think it's bright. It's, it's incredible. And we all should be welcoming it. Are you basically an optimist then? I'm generally an optimist and, and, I, and I try to look at the negative sides of things and to use them as a risk aversion towards the strategy to avert risk. But generally, you have to have a positive outlook in life to grow and to do, do something worth, uh, worth, worth of uh, value. And where is uh, Canada positioned on this? Are we considered a leader or are we a laggard? 
So Canada is, uh, I wish I could say Canada is a leader in everything. Canada definitely is leading some things. We've got the world's greatest talent in blockchain, in artificial intelligence. Our universities are, are really doing well. Uh, from from uh, other aspects, I think we're lagging a little bit behind uh, and we need to do more to compete at a global and an international level. We've got a tremendous amount of talent pool that's coming into Canada every year. So I think it needs the right uh, nurturing, right government grants, government uh, subsidies, and what have you, the better results we will get. Uh, yeah, no, and I, I think you raise a good point because uh, there's, uh, there's so much that can be uh, done here. Uh, uh, and we've got a, so much talent here in Canada, and we are attracting talent at the same time. That's that's the the key thing as well. It's not just uh, homegrown talent. Uh, you, you're seeing the same trend. We, I absolutely am. I think our main problem is execution and speed of execution. Um, I visit Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Asia uh, all the time, and what is differentiating them with us is the speed of execution. Right. Uh, and uh, Canadians are great people, uh, very nice people, but I think a little bit of uh, aggressiveness towards the positive side of our goals has to be done from at all levels. On that note, uh, Ian Khan, thanks for joining us again. Always some great insights. We wish you well, sir. Thanks for having me, Tony. Thank you. Another great conversation with Ian Khan, a really important technology expert and futurist, done a lot in the documentary circuit of trying to allow people to understand what's going on is the, the rate of change is so fast uh, that uh, you really do need to keep up on it. And uh, Ian Khan is there to help you as well. Thanks for watching today and we'll see you next time. 